We have already sent probes past Pluto and out of our solar system, and Hubble has peered into the unimaginably vast reaches of space. And we have come to realize that we are connected to it all. Your connection with the universe began long before you were born. Did you know that the atoms and elements of your body were forged in the hearts of stars? Carbon? Nitrogen? Iron? And then, when that star exploded, they were spread throughout the universe. The atoms in your foot may come from a different star than the atoms in your hand, and different from the ones in your heart. We are connected to the stars in a profound way, literally made of stardust. Individual examples of a living, connected universe. Our mountains have watched humanity rise. Yet, what have we risen to? Are we at our best? Are we capable of so much more? Imagine if we open our eyes to new ideas, the heights to which we could rise, and make that journey for ourselves, and for all of humanity. Because we are all one. It has been a long road to get to the place where we truly understand the concept, as above, so below, as within, so without. And that the forces of black holes are present in something as small as a proton. This changes the way we see the unity of our world. As the dreams of our future take flight, this becomes an equation for a more connected humanity. Einstein believed that a unified equation should be beautiful in its simplicity, containing no free parameters. This is Nassim Haramein's equation. It contains no free parameters, and it solves for mass and gravity, both at the cosmological and quantum scale, with simple geometry and algebra. I took the radius, I calculated the surface, I calculated the volume, and then I divided by the little Planck spheres to figure out how many is inside and how many is outside. So that the outside was denoted as eta in our paper and the inside as capital R. And then I just did R over eta. I just looked at the relationship of the inside information to the surface horizon information. And I got a ratio and eventually I multiplied that ratio by a mass, the Planck mass. And the result of my equation was the exact gravitational mass of the black hole, just by basically pixelating the inside and the outside of the black hole and looking at their relationship. So all of a sudden, I was getting a solution to gravity, the solution to Einstein field equation, a solution that is based on holography, but not only that, a solution that's based on little Planck pixel, so that it was quantized. Einstein said we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. Creating this bridge to unify the great divide in physics is an important step forward in advancing a more connected view of physics. So in the paper that I wrote and I, I sent to the Library of Congress for copywriting in December 2012, I make this little prediction that the radius of the proton should be exactly this value. 
and I state in the paper that more precise measurement in the future may confirm this theoretical result. I started to work on getting the paper published and sending it to colleagues around the world. I was getting very good reviews on it from very advanced physicists. And then all of a sudden, a paper was published. On January 25th, 2013, a new muonic measurement of the charge radius of the proton confirmed Haramain's predicted value. The experimental results were not what the quantum world wanted to hear. The measurement came in at 4% smaller than what was expected by the standard model. And so it was very difficult for the scientific community to accept this measurement. The Sim, you're on Yahoo Finance News. What do you think about that? Oh my God. <laughs> TVS.news. Changing the paradigm as we talk. History in the making. New Connected Universe Theory offers alternative explanation of gravity and mass revealing potential new source of energy. That's big. Look, it's in the middle of the day. I mean, the night. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really awesome. Oh, my God. It's incredible. The wire went out, and within minutes, it was picked up by some of the largest networks and media on the planet and it's already across the world india um germany i mean europe is coming online the east coast will in the next few hours i'm sure i just feel like okay we're making a significant difference now we're we're really kind of birthing a new paradigm a new moment in the history of science and the history of uh, understanding of the universe on the planet. Some 30 years I've been visualizing this moment where my work would appear on major news feeds all around the world. I mean, we got a lot of, a lot of pickup on this news feed. Today's the day. And it's kind of strange. It's a strange feeling. It's like, oh my God, it actually happened. And you know, it seems like a day like any other day, but it, this is the day that it happened. And this could very well be the day that uh, science changed forever. But so far, it hasn't been the day that science changed forever. Looking back through history and physics, this is a pattern that has been repeated time after time after time. Someone comes up with an idea that later will become standard, but at the time, nothing happens. And sometimes there is massive criticism about the idea because it's a different way of thinking. We are only now discovering some of the unpublished works of Sir Isaac Newton. He didn't share all of his work because it went against the religious dogmas of his time. A bit like steering a large ship. The wheel gets turned, but there's no immediate change of direction. In the world of physics, it can take years. After he first published his paper, Haramain was invited to share his knowledge with one of the largest laboratories in the world. However, when the administration found out about it, that invitation was cancelled because they were focused on looking for a solution in a different way. After 30 years of work, believing that this would be his moment, history is again being repeated, that potentially a big leap forward in our understanding is not being recognized. What I'm most afraid of is that the world will misinterpret what I say, misinterpret who I am, and um, continue on their self-destructive path they are on today. And that this incredible opportunity in our civilization we've had to grow and to evolve to a galactic community will be missed.
I hope to be able to inspire people to think differently, to not be afraid to be who they are, and not to take everything they thought in the school or in the media or anywhere else just as a given, but actually to question what is being said and the validity of it and to do it in a way that is constructive and that leads to higher understanding and higher levels of creativity. And I hope that my path and all this exploration I've done can inspire people.